What up, what up, everybody? Homie, homie, homie RJ. RJ. And today, 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 tonight, tonight, I wanted to do something, something a little different. different. I bring to you three little short stories for you guys to enjoy. You know, it's something a little different. Something a little experimental. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, but yeah. Hope you guys hope enjoy. You guys enjoy. You guys enjoy. And, and, and turn off the turn lights. Off the lights. Crack, open Crack open a cold open one a cold with, the boys, with the boys or girls. Or girls. And enjoy. And enjoy. <clears throat> These scary stories will take you on a strange and fearsome journey where darkness or fog or mist or the sound of a person screaming or a dog howling turns ordinary places into nightmarish places where nothing is what you expect. People have been telling scary stories for as long as anyone knows. From the first, they were tales of supernatural creatures that people feared would harm them. Boogeymen, monsters, demons, ghosts, and evil spirits lurking in the dark, waiting for the chance to strike. We still tell stories about creatures we fear, but not all of them are about boogeymen and demons. Quite a few are about living people. You will meet some of them. A fat or jolly get butcher. You, get you, get you. A friendly girl who <laughs> plays a drum. A neighbor. Hello, neighbor. Hello, and neighbor. others who, at the best, are not trusted. Scary stories of this kind have often have a serious purpose. They may warn young people of dangers that await them when they set out into the world of their own. But for the most part, we tell scary stories to have fun. We turn out the lights or we leave just a candle burning. Then we sit close together and tell stories we know. Often these include some that have passed down over hundreds of years. If a story scares enough, your flesh begins to creep. You get a shivery, shaky, screamy feeling. You imagine hearing and seeing things. You hold your breath as you wait and learn how it all ends. If something startles, <laughs> everyone gasps or jumps or screams. Some people call those shivery, shaky, screamy feelings the heebie-jeebies or the screaming memes. The poet T.S. Eliot called them hoo-hahs. <laughs> you better read the stories while you are still feeling brave enough before it gets dark. Then the moon is up. Tell them to your friends and relatives You'll probably give them the hoo-hahs. They'll have fun. And so are you. So are you. The minister's daughter had just gotten married. After the wedding ceremony, there was a great feast with music and dancing and contests and games, even old children's games. When they got to playing hide and seek, the bride decided to hide in her grandfather's trunk up seek. in the attic. They'll never find me here. <laughs> As she was climbing into the trunk, the lid came down <gasps> and cracked her on the head. And she fell unconscious inside. The lid slammed shut and locked. No one will ever know how long she called for help or how hard she struggled to free herself from that tomb. 
everyone in the village searched for her, and they looked almost everywhere. But no one thought of looking in the trunk. <laughs> After a week, her brand new groom and all the others gave her up for lost. Years later, a maid went into the attic looking for something she needed. Maybe it's in the trunk, hmm. she had thought. She opened it and screamed. There lay the missing bride in her wedding dress. But by then, she was only a skeleton. <laughs> uh, talk about lost love, am I right? <laughs> Daisy Clark had been in a coma for more than a month when the doctor said she had finally died. I'm sorry, I'm she sorry. didn't. She was buried on a cool summer day in a small cemetery about a mile away from her house. May she always rest in such peace, her husband said, but she didn't. Huh? Late that night, a grave robber with a shovel and a lantern <laughs> began to dig her up. Since the ground was still soft, he quickly reached the coffin and got it open. His hunch was right. Daisy had been buried wearing two valuable rings. A wedding ring with a diamond in it and a ring with a ruby that glowed as if it were alive. The thief got down on his knees and reached into the coffin to get the rings. But they were stuck far on her fingers. So... He decided the only way to get them was to cut them off her fingers uh, with a knife. Off, off, off. But when he cut into the fingers with the wedding ring, it began to bleed. What the hell? And the hell? Daisy Clark <gasps> began to stir and suddenly sat up. Whoa, terrified, shit, shit. the man scrambled to his feet. He accidentally kicked over the lantern and the light went out. He could hear Daisy climb out of her grave as she moved past him in the dark. He stood there, frozen with fear, clutching his knife in his hand. When Daisy saw him, she pulled her shroud around and asked, Who are you? When the grave robber heard this corpse speak, he ran. Daisy shrugged his shoulders and walked on <laughs> Pussy. and never ever looked back go, 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 not go, even go, once shit, 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 fuck, 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 but in his fear and confusion the thief fled in the wrong direction he pitched headlong into the grave fell on the knife and stabbed himself while Daisy walked home, the thief bled to death. <laughs> Karma's a bitch, ain't it? <laughs> and yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope you guys hope enjoyed you guys that. Enjoyed that. You know, this is you know, something, this is a, little something a little different, and I had a I lot had of fun, fun making it. Making it. Making Who knows? There might be more of this in the future. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hope everybody has a great day. A great night. Whenever you're watching this, this is the homie E-R-J-A-L. Later, y'all. Later, y'all.